thousands of Africans make their home in Russia today, their ranks include large numbers of asylum seekers, refugees and economic migrants. The exact number of these types of migrants is unclear because many are in the country illegally and have not registered with authorities. But some academics believe there could be between 30,000 and 32,000 undocumented Africans living in Russia today. Without proper papers, and in many cases with little or no knowledge of the Russian language, they are unable to find proper jobs, and this is just one of the many challenges they face. The most common work these Africans find is distributing flyers, advertisements and free magazines around subway stations. The monotonous task typically pays less than $50 a week. Most of these migrants are unable to pay high rental fees, so are typically forced to live up to 10 people to a room in neighbourhoods such as Lyubersi, on the outskirts of Moscow. Suhail Yusuf, a Sudanese refugee, lives here. He shares a flat with 14 other Africans. Sometimes the flat's inhabitants swell to 20. The men sleep side by side on mattresses on the floor. They shower in shifts and share a small kitchen. Yusef said the men have bonded as brothers, but enduring such harsh living conditions is intolerable. Compounding the hardship of these Africans is the widespread hostility and racism they often face from some Russian extremists, such as neo-Nazis and skinheads. John Stephen Abumen says he has been attacked by skinheads three times in the 15 years he has lived in Russia. He has a stab wound in the left arm, a broken wrist, a protruding lump on his chest and an eye injury. He has a large welt on his head where he was struck with an iron bar. His knee was dislocated and has never healed properly, leaving him with a limp. Doctors have told him that he urgently needs an operation to repair his knee, but he can't afford it. I'm concerned with the um, violence of the attacks. Uh, it can be uh, beating people with knives, or uh, metal bars, which are quite violent attacks, and then uh, Africans <laughs> that have been attacked need help, uh, uh, juridical help and medical help. Human rights advocates say few Africans ever report the assaults against them, and when they do, police typically don't take their reports seriously. Some leaders of right-wing extremist groups deny that they instigate or condone the mistreatment of Africans. Нет, конечно, никакое общероссийское движение националистов никогда не создавало с целью нападения и совершения тяжких и особо тяжких. Dmitry Domyushkin, who heads a nationalist coalition called the Russians, insisted that his organization does not target blacks and blamed such attacks on skinheads and other radical groups. Some African migrants said they would be willing to return home if they could afford a plane ticket. But many said, having left to seek their fortunes, it was far too embarrassing to go home empty-handed. Others are reluctant to leave behind Russian wives, partners and children. Journalist Fabrice Kanda became a wanted man after writing stories charging fraud during the 2011 presidential elections in his home country, the Democratic Republic of Congo. For those who fled their native countries for political reasons, it's dangerous to return home. Salifu Mamadou also had to flee his native Guinea. Yeah. Both Kanda and Mamadou applied for asylum in Russia but were denied. They want to find another country that might take them in. Of course, not all Africans who live in Russia are suffering hardship. Many have managed to successfully assimilate. On the top floor of an old factory building in an industrial neighbourhood of St. Petersburg, the sound of punches, kicks and grunts greet visitors at the door of the Sanal Mai Tai Boxing Club. The club is owned by George Nungas, a native of Cameroon who has lived in Russia for 20 years. 
He has a Russian wife, Russian citizenship, and he wants his three mixed-race boys to grow up identifying as being Russian. The club's members include Russians, Afro-Russians, Armenians and Georgians, among other ethnicities. Nunga said he knows there are problems with intolerance and hostility towards Africans, but he believes the situation has vastly improved. Rwanda native Valence Marie Gerenga also calls Russia home. Now I can say that really in Russia there is a change. People recognize that they can live and work with different peoples, especially from Africa, there is no problem, I think. He said Africans who try to integrate don't have problems. He's a university professor in St. Petersburg. He's also married to a Russian and has Russian citizenship. Africanda, a group of entertainers, is spreading a positive message about Africa and its people through music and cultural events. Africanda's leader, Pavel Karatkov, is Russian. He calls the group a family. A long-time enthusiast for all things African, Karatkov believes that music transcends all boundaries and can help foster mutual understanding between peoples. Crowds typically gather when the entertainers set up on the street to play an impromptu concert or do skits. In his spare time, Ndiaga Samba, a Senegalese composer and an accomplished saxophonist, teaches Russians how to play African drums. Members of the group meet each week in the basement of an old warehouse in Moscow. Many of the students said that learning to play the drums had piqued their interest in the African continent and culture. Thabang Motsi is a Moscow-based anchor for the television channel Russia Today. She said she was hopeful that exposure to high-profile Africans like herself, who are excelling professionally, might help engender a more positive perception of Africans among Russians. A native of South Africa, she remembers how when she first moved to Russia in 2011, people took photos of her without asking. Mothers pulled their children away from her on the subway. There was often pointing and snickering and unwanted sexual advances. But 33-year-old Motse has learned to adapt. She works to dispel stereotypes some of her Russian colleagues might have about black people. In turn, they have taught her much about Russian culture. Her message to those who remain intolerant is simple. You can't pull me down, she says. I'm black, so what? Deal with it. Many Africans say they know that some Russians will never accept them, but they continue to endure, hopeful that new attitudes will prevail with every new generation. <laughs>